In 1958, at a then 10 years young King Five, nostalgic anchors mused on the future of the city. Seattle is not only spreading out, it's spreading upward. Some 35 to 40 million dollars worth of new buildings, many of them in the skyscraper class, are being built in the downtown area. Those skyscrapers were less than 20 stories in height. Seattle would more than triple in size over the next 65 years. The cool thing about King coming on the air in 1948, that's when Seattle is really coming into its own. As King 5 came into its own, an early mock-up shows what its television center could have looked like. The mock-up was ultimately abandoned, but the designer went on to a much bigger stage. That's where I am. I'm on top of the needle. Designing the Space Needle, the centerpiece of Seattle's 1962 World's Fair. The Needle, alongside the monorail, are two modern attractions that still draw tens of thousands of visitors every year, long after they propelled Seattle into the global spotlight. And while dreamers look to the future at Seattle Center, Seattle's biggest employer was taking to the skies. The maiden flight of Boeing 707 prototype. Boeing, founded along the Duwamish River, is an economic powerhouse for Western Washington. Here in the cockpit, everything that the pilots do is critical. Covering this one company was Glenn Farley's first job at King. He arrived in 86, 15 years after the Boeing boomtown went bust. As tens of thousands of people lost their job in the early 1970s, two real estate agents paid for this iconic sign over the freeway. Will the last person leaving Seattle please turn off the lights? The price of housing here, if anybody can believe this, actually dropped and dropped dramatically. Boeing would recover, but Seattle would keep changing. It was no longer the only game in town, as companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Starbucks transformed the region. When King 5 moved out of its Dexter Avenue location in South Lake Union, Seattle had more cranes downtown than anywhere in the world. The station moved across town to the stadium district with its own history of explosive growth. Seattle said goodbye to the Kingdome in 2000. And the 0-1 pitch on the way to Edgar Martinez. Swung on the line, down the left field line for a base hit. The city's Here's home for big memories. Here's Junior to third base. They're going to wave him in. Without the Kingdome, there'd be no Seahawks, no Mariners, no Supercross, no place to seat 74,000 people for a Billy Graham crusade. But from birth to destruction, it was also a home for controversy. The Kingdome was this big monstrosity, some monster that was going to come in and wipe out the whole neighborhood. Ultimately, Seattle would need more room for its growing pro sports teams, all featuring modern venues, T-Mobile Park, Lumen Field, and most recently, the new Climate Pledge Arena, home of the Seattle Kraken. There are even plans to renovate Memorial Stadium, the high school gridiron that was home to King 5's first broadcast. But one thing that hasn't changed since all those years ago. And I know that there isn't a single man here who would dare hazard a guess as to what the next 10 years will bring.